What is up? My name is Rubidium. I'm a filmmaker and photographer, and today I wanted to go over the things that I took away from directing my first feature film. So, a little bit of background. In 2015, I shot a feature film based on a script that I had written uh, called Brooklyn Tide. Once you start running, it's only a matter of time. We shot it for 12 days in and around the streets of my apartment in Brooklyn when I lived in New York City and spent the next year finishing the film um, in any way that we could. It was released on Amazon Prime in 2016, a year later, and it's still streaming on that service if you want to check it out. So the first big thing I learned on this film is that directing and producing, meaning being the person responsible for the film logistically and financially and being the person responsible film creatively at the same time is a very, very difficult prospect. Uh, I didn't have an on-set producer um, for this film. I didn't have anyone there to take care of those things for me. So I just did them myself and I figured this was, a, this was my chance. I wasn't going to not take that opportunity and so I would just work twice as hard. Um, the truth isn't that easy. Um, it sort of feels like directing, producing sort of feels like trying to be the chef in the kitchen cooking amazing food but then also trying to be the waiter that keeps running out to the restaurant to take people's orders and get people's checks and it's, it means that you can't focus solely on what you want to focus on, which is the creative journey of the characters and the arc of the story, but you're always being pulled out of that by where are we shooting next? Are we able to get everyone there? Um, how are we going to charge the camera? Where are we going to be tomorrow? Um, how are we going to feed everyone? You know, all those, all those on-set crises that come up are so intense and they mean that you only get 30 seconds to think about something before something else comes along and like demands your attention this film was constantly in danger of like going off the rails and i had to work really really hard to keep the machine keep the engine moving um, and that had to come out of the focus I had for the creativity of the film, there was just, there's just no way to do both as well as you would like. Now, I'm proud of the film. I'm happy with how it turned out, but it, I made it so much harder for myself trying to split my time between those two things. You know, the production was very intense. It was 12, like 18 hour days. Um, we lost a whole day due to rain. I had a really good experience. It was exhausting. It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. But adrenaline sort of carries you through. You know, this film needs to get made. You've made promises to people. You've 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 sold everyone on this dream, and you need to kind of push through and make it happen. And that momentum, that adrenaline, carries you through production. And it's only when you know all the cameras and lights and stabilizers have gone back to the rental houses that you're set there with a couple of hard drives full of footage and you need to turn all that those individual shots into a story and you know the assembly goes together pretty quick you sync up the footage you get a you get a cut that, that tells some kind of story and then you know the weeks turn into months turn into years as you're the only one there sort of pushing this forward everyone else has gone on to their own their, their other projects you know, or they're impatient with you of like, why isn't this done yet? And you have to, you know, somehow get up every morning, sit down at this, at your computer and look at this huge sort of unwieldy, um, you know, hours of footage that you have to somehow extract the movie from. You have to sort of, that was the toughest part for me. That was definitely the hardest part of uh, staying motivated and staying engaged to this thing that felt like 
you don't know the way forward and that it, the process will never end. I was used to making commercials and to short films and documentaries where, you know, you can do the edit yourself, you can do the sound mix yourself, you can source the music yourself, but on a feature film with just, you know, literally hours of content, you can't just dive in and do something. Every task takes months, you know, whether it's the... Um, the edit that I had, a really great editor, color grade that I did myself in within Premiere, um, all the music, it's just, it, it seems so insurmountable. Um, it's so, it's such a hard thing to get your head around. I think with a, with a short film, there's a, there's a simple thought and you can kind of hold the whole thing in your head at once, even if it's 20 minutes long, but a 90 minute feature, there's so many aspects to it. Every, every scene, that you change changes the meanings of all the other scenes. It's it's too much to keep in your head. It's so it's so difficult to wield. Once you take the weekend or you take a day off, or you have to leave the project to earn money to support the post production process, it takes you just as long to get your head back in the game and, and um, understand you know the limits of the project and what you have to do. It's it was really hard. The thing I was most worried about going into the project was the performance of the actors. But it's, it's really funny. We shot mainly in sequence. Um, and I had had rehearsals and I talked a lot about the character with the actors. And without exception, they just did an incredible job. Like I very rarely needed to even give them that much direction. Like they knew, I think they all had a really great sense of who their characters were. And the the momentum of production meant that we really only had one, two, maybe a third take, and they kind of rose to the occasion and just the, the the momentum again of the moment took over and they gave these incredible performances that um that really carried the film and I'm you know, what a what a blessing, what a what a gift to have actors like that that that, you know, you're dealing with seven other things and you call action and they just put themselves on the line for you. I mean, it just goes to show that if you cast the right people and you listen to their ideas about who those characters are and you work with them on the script that they'll show up for you um, when you need them to. And I really needed them to and they really did. What I would do differently on the next project was start with the deliverables and the money I needed and a date and work backwards from that. I think what I worked towards, I on Brooklyn Tide, I worked towards the, sh the first day of production, you know, sprinted to that, sprinted through it, got through it, and then sort of like, like I said, at the end of the, at the last day of shooting, you know, you do a couple pickups when things, when you need extra shots that you didn't get. And then you're, you're sort of sitting there saying, what now? Like, I would fold production into a wider, um, more complete schedule that ended all the way to a premiere and hopefully to a sale. Like you have to work backwards from what you need, not just work forwards to what you want the shoot date to be. I would also, on my next feature, I will also make sure I overwrite. You know, we had a 90 page script and it ended up being a 75 minute film. I think the one page per one minute of screen time thing works great if you're dealing with an action Hollywood blockbuster where you have a mix of scenes. But for us, I didn't want to. I didn't want to um, leave flab in the scenes. I wanted to really cut them really aggressively and 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 have you have the especially on a film like Brooklyn Tide where it's you know one giant chase scene and you know it's not a lot of sitting around talking. It's 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 always moving forward. I would going back. I would write extra scenes and get them into the schedule somehow so that. If they didn't work, I could always cut them, but at least I had the amount of minutes I needed. That was the number one thing I heard from distributors is that we need a 90 minute film. We can't, like especially in other territories, they need 90 minutes. They can't sell or can't buy a 75, even an 82 minute film. I don't regret anything on Brooklyn Tide. I'm really proud of the film that I made. I'm really proud of the team that worked on it, how it all came together. It was an incredible learning experience. If I had waited until I had everything, I'd still be waiting now. I, I, you know, I picked my moment, the time was right, I had what I thought I needed, and I went for it. 
I found out sort of, it's like jump and build your wings on the way down. That's, that's definitely how this project felt, but I'm really proud of um, what came out of it. And the failures of the film were my greatest lessons as a filmmaker. If you're thinking about shooting a feature film, you know, get all the resources you can, but then you just have to bite the bullet and, and do it. You just have to um, dive in and, and find what works for you and, and have that experience because you, know, you, can, you can shoot all the shorts in the world, you can shoot all the music videos and commercials. Nothing will prepare you for a feature film. It is it's totally its own beast and you need to, you know, you need to get time in those trenches and, and learn on the run. Hope this helped someone out there. I really, it, it's great for me to make these videos and put down on film what my thought process is just so that I can look back at them going forward and, and understand and try not to make the same mistakes twice. But hope you guys enjoy this. Um, let me know what you think. More videos coming soon.